This is the Programming with Codia podcast. Learn to code on the iPad for the iPad. My name is Patrick Oxel, and today we will continue our journey with Codia and talk about local variables. Last time when I left you, we worked on lesson number one, and this time we're going to start with a little trick. Instead of creating a new project and typing everything from scratch, we're going to do some good programming laziness and copy what we already have. So if you just select your lesson number one and hold your finger over it, this little pop-up window will show up. The delete button is a little dangerous because if you press that, it just deletes your project right away. There's no uh, secondary menu to pop up and ask you if you really want to do this. So be careful with pressing delete. Copy Copying your solution will actually take it as a text file and let you paste it into some other application like your mail or something. The export will take your solution and export it for importing into Xcode onto a Mac so you can actually make a full application that you can submit to the App Store. So what we're going to do is we're going to press duplicate. You notice the little window flies out and we're just going to change the name to lesson number two. When you're done, press done and you will notice that we are back with an exact copy of the program we did last time. So we're just going to start right at the top and we're going to change this comment to say lesson two since that's the program that we're going to be making. And you'll remember that we discussed the importance of placing comments in your code, especially the comment header at the beginning, just so that you can communicate to other people looking at your code what this program does, who made it, when, and what it's for. So we're just going to change the comment at the bottom that says this program displays hello world because today's program is going to display a rectangle and show its area. So the next thing we're going to do is move down to our setup function. You'll remember from before that setup happens once and only once at the very beginning. And we had some lines of code that we added last time that changed the orientation to landscape and then also took our styles and set them to null so that we know for sure every time we're starting with a fresh new set and that nothing is going to get in our way. We're going to add one line after supported orientations and what this is going to do is last time when we ran our program we had the console window on the left hand side. This time we're going to get rid of that completely so that we're actually in a full screen mode. So we're just going to add display mode and inside the brackets we're going to place the command full screen. So this will ensure that our program is a full screen application. At the bottom we had the print command in the setup function that print it out hello world to our console window. We're just going to delete that for now because we're not going to use the console window since we just made our program a full screen application. So we'll just take that line and we'll delete it. The next thing we're going to do is move down to our draw function. You'll remember that the draw function happens 60 times a second and it starts right from the beginning and because we have background being set it repaints the background and then places whatever you have right back onto the screen and it keeps doing that 60 times a second. So all the um, what we're going to do before we start drawing the background is we're going to place in our local variables since this program is about local variables. 
Local variables are important because they get created locally at the beginning of the draw function. The draw function will occur and then at the end of the draw function the variables will be destroyed so that you are not wasting memory. They don't exist the entire time the program exists. They only exist when we declare them inside the draw function locally while that one is running for that little instance. So we're going to place a comment at the top just so that we know that we're talking about local variables. And then we're going to declare two variables to begin with, width and height. Use the keyword local to describe that you're actually creating a local variable. And then we're going to give our two variables names. The first one we're going to call width of rectangle, and we're actually also going to assign it a value right at the beginning as well. The character that you use for assigning a value is actually the equal sign. Remember that it's not actually pronounced as an equal sign because it's not doing any quality check. You're actually assigning a value to the variable. So the way you would read this is local width of rectangle is assigned and I'm going to assign it the value 100. On the next line we're going to create a second variable called height of a rectangle and we're going to assign it a value of 50. The last variable that we're going to create is called area and I'm just going to correct myself and put local at the beginning. And we're not actually going to assign it a value because it's going to be a calculated value. It's going to figure out what the value of the area is from the width and the height of a rectangle. We're now going to move down and we're going to go to the section where we're setting up our drawing functions. Our background is already set to the color that we want. Next I'm going to add a stroke color so that our rectangle that we're going to draw actually has a certain color. And I'm just going to type in by hand this time instead of actually using the color picker what my values are going to be. After font size, I'm going to add another line and this command is called text mode and what that does is set the default on where the text starts showing up and we're going to assign it corner so that when we assign an exact location of where our text is supposed to show up it actually shows up and references the bottom right hand corner or sorry bottom left hand corner and the font I'm going to just keep as is and I'm going to add the push style command just so whoops. Let me correct that. Push style command 
and what that does is take all of the formatting that we just set up here and pushes it onto the stack so that this is now the formatting until we pop it off or remove it from the stack. Now that we're done that, the next thing that we're going to do is actually draw a rectangle. Codia has a function called rect, which will draw a rectangle for us. It accepts several parameters. The first one it accepts is, the first two is the location of the rectangle. So I'm just going to place it at 100 comma 100. The next thing it accepts is the width and height, and since those are variables from above, I'm going to use those. Once that done, is done, I'm going to then get the computer, or CODIA, to actually calculate the area of the rectangle. And of course, area is just the width times the height. Now that we have the area, I'm just going to remove this comment. We can take our text statement from last time, and instead of saying hello world, we can tell people the area is. And we're going to use the concatenation function, which in Codia is in Lua is two dots, so we're going to say take the string area, the area is, and then add to it area, which we just calculated above. And then of course you have to tell it where to place this with an x and a y value, so we'll place it there. And then the last thing we're going to do just for style is we're going to pop the style off since just above we push the style on. So each time it will take our style, push it onto the stack, write out the text, and then pop it off again. When we're all done, we can run our program. And you'll notice it draws a rectangle for us in full screen mode and it calculates the area. So if we go back to our program now, we can change the width. And we can change the height. We can rerun our program and you'll notice it'll draw a larger rectangle and it will figure out the new area for us. So that's all we're going to do today. The important thing to remember is how to declare local variables and make sure that you always use local variables unless there's some really good reason why you need a variable to exist all the time and then you would declare it as a global variable and we will talk about that in a later program.